Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hello and welcome back to the show. Maybe you as a student need to get ready for college or maybe it's a vocational career, right? Or prior to entering college or your career path. Think about this because somebody here today from Dean Brandon Institute wants to help you teaching those life skills and of course, higher level thinking activities, offering virtual test prep, uh, workshops for college entrance exams, so much more, even for nursing students, pre-allied health and all those uh, you know, essential tests as well. Welcome back to the show. We are excited to have our friend and owner of the company, Dr. Tamara Smith, back with us. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Jill? I'm Thank great, you sweetheart. Pleasure to have you back. Tell us Thank the you. website, how we could find you. Absolutely. Um, just go to www.dbi-llc.org or you can give us a call at 917-426-5842. All right. Well, I've gotten to know you very well the past few weeks, and I hope some of our listeners have too. If you are new to the show, don't worry. We're going to give you all the scoop and the background on what uh, DBI is all about. Uh, Again, that's dbi-llc.org. First and foremost, it's your blueprint to success. Uh, Dr. Smith, tell us the overall goal of what you provide and want to provide for so many. Um, the overall goal is that I want to help students who are challenged, especially if they're going into the allied health and nursing field with their pre-admission exams. As we all know that colleges only accept a certain amount of students um, in those pro- type of programs, but you have over 100 or 200 students all trying to aim for those 20 spots. And then you have those students that just may have challenges with that entrance exam that just kind of won't help them to push them over to that acceptance side. But what Dean Brennan does, we offer tease prep uh, uh, tease prep and that is most of the interest exams for a mm-hmm. lot of nursing uh, students across the country and so we help with the, uh, each section we have expert um, instructors to teach over the reading writing and the math and science awesome instructors especially our science instructors I have to shout them out they're really good over the anatomy but however that's not just all that we do because we also know that um, there's more and more students that are coming into college have to take courses that they won't count towards that degree plan because they have to take those developmental courses. Well, Dean Brennan also does a college prep um, for those exams and stuff to kind of help you not have to take those developmental courses that's not going to be required for your degree. Also, um, in the future, where we're hoping to launch by this spring or January, we'll have our early college, um, or, I'm sorry, orientation (laughs) curriculum where students can come in and kind of give a first year experience to college while they're in high school and it's going to be probably promoted for juniors and seniors it's just a eight week module um just kind of getting students help and prepare them for college so that way that when they come in they already know what to expect well and can i just ask a little bit about your background as well Yes, uh, I am a senior success coach. I am, well, the other word for academic advisor, I've been advising for over 15 years now and for allied health and nursing. Um, right now, I work with traditional uh, cohorts, so that's pretty mm-hmm. much all majors, but uh, my specialty is in the allied health and nursing field. Um and so I work at a community college in Dallas. The Dean Brandon was established in Oklahoma, but it's a virtual company. So we kind of operate all across and provide needs. And what pro, um, sparked me to start Dean Brandon was just basically my experiences as an academic advisor. I saw that there was a deeper need with a lot of our students every year. The need gets more and more. And I wanted to do my part to be able to help others um, have access to college and to kind of help remove some barriers for them. Beautiful. Well, we're excited you're back here today joining us to talk more about this work. And I know you're so dedicated. You're always busy, always on the go. Uh, and But your mission, Clear, is is just to really help so many people. And let's talk. You're based out of where exactly? And where can people attend Dean Brandon Institute? Well, it's a, like I said, it's a virtual company, mm-hmm. though, but... I'm out of, based out of, um, sorry, Dallas, Texas. So a lot of my pilot has um, experience has been out of Texas, um, starting with West Texas, where we actually um, 
working in my field as advising and stuff, I offered the workshop to students for the first year. I had over 100 students in attendance from neighboring schools, including my institution I was working with. And so we ran that, piloted for about three years and saw the success in it. And I was like, well, hey, how about if I just sit provide this service on a larger scale and stuff and try to help more um, students in different states try to get into their programs. So that's kind of the heart of how Dean Brandon got this became established. And um, as far as my background, 15 years uh, in mm-hmm. student services, as well as I just recently, maybe last year, got my doctorate degree in educational research. So I'm very committed to education, especially at the post-secondary level. Got it. And now what's this is, you know, back to school, at least for my little guys, right? Like the elementary school year, what's happening? And with colleges and all now, I mean, is there something that's really booming in the Institute that people are in need in need of help with right now? Um, basically, right now, um, it's just I'm no- noticing this year that a lot of students are less familiar with different process or even like college jargon. Well, um, Dean Brandon helps students with those things. Mm-hmm. With And I plan to do that with far as with our first year curriculum that I would like to establish um, at the high school level. Because I think that um, just through my experience and stuff, we, colleges do offer a first year experience course. But the caveat to that is, is that a lot of students don't take the course serious because you're being taught kind of yeah. like the basic things. And so if you're already in English 1301, you don't want to learn yeah. how to take notes. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm already beyond that, even though you may need it. So I thought that maybe if we introduced it at an early age where students are already eager, they already kind of made their decision like, hey, I'm going to go to college. Well, why not go ahead and prep them with everything they need at that point while they're still hungry and eager? And so that's one of the cha- um, challenges as well as Again, those developmental courses, uh, you have a lot of students that's coming in that's not testing at the levels that they would like. And so they're finding themselves having to take extra courses that's not going to count towards their degree plan, yeah. but it also counts against their financial aid payments. I'm trying to go ahead and offer that service and stuff to help students to better um, be able to pass those exams without having to pay for classes that they're not going to need. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that. And, you know, joining, yes. going into it all, right, you have the first steps in first year seminar course curriculum, which is introducing, you said, students to self-evaluation, uh, different mm-hmm. cultural diversity, study skills, time management, all of that stuff. So that's an hour virtual class that you do, right? So, uh, that would be my in my curriculum that I plan to launch in January. Oh, oh. Oh, tell me that. Okay. Just, go back up, back up. Go ahead. So tell me, tell me more about that. I forgot. Yes, that is the launch. Go ahead. Well, for the launch. Yes. So, yes. So I, I want to introduce that first year experience early on to high school students. And I, cause I think it would be more beneficial and I don't see why that more colleges don't adopt that. However, um, they don't get that experience until they actually hear. Well, why they're already here and stuff. They're yeah. already le- kind of learning kind of the hard way, I like to say, because they're already going ahead navigating through these courses and stuff and trying to also learn how to navigate just processes and services from the institution. I feel that if we introduce those things, at least those simple things early on, we have th- that would be our contribution of helping students to be more prepared once they get into our doors. And well, so it's a, it will be an eight week curriculum. Okay. It's op- it will be over um, just pretty much study tips. It will be over time management. It will be over procrastination. Um, anybody, if you heard about the imposter syndrome, kind of like, I don't know, I'll touch base on that. So you're curious. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what's in it? Yeah, wait, tell, tell me. I'm not sure. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. And um, also, um, just basically college jargon and also. Um, it's becoming self-aware, it's learning your weaknesses and your strengths. So that way you'll be, students can come into college feeling more empowered than more fearful and unknown. And now back to the imposter syndrome. What imposter syndrome is, is basically a term that's token that where we go off and uh, complete these accomplishments, but though sometimes we think we're not worthy yeah. or yeah. sometimes we think that um, or feel guilty because maybe a friend got into school and, I mean, or you got into school, but a friend didn't. And then you feel like you didn't deserve that award and stuff. Or just questioning, 
should I be here? Because you have a lot of students that do come in that first year and wonder um, if they should be here. And that kind of messes up with their psych and also interfere with their progress and success. I have um, different exercises that kind of help students to master that. Again, to kind of focus more on self-awareness and building on the students' strengths, as well as introducing them to just the college jargon stuff, because a lot of students can probably navigate their first year really well if they understood what they actually was doing. I know. (laughs) That's got to be so hard. I can can remember those days, how difficult it was. And back then, we didn't, uh, you know, let's see, I graduated high school in 96 and then college. It was just like no one was there to, like, guide you. There was no, I remember that Mm -hmm. big, that that big, uh, what's it called, the Barron's Review? There was like a... For Barron's. Was it Barron's? Like the review books, like to take your test. Like you go to the the bookstore and like the review for your test. There was no like test preps. There was no uh, clubs. There was no no online. It was so difficult. Now there's so much at our fingertips. And I love the fact that it's virtual. My goodness. Yes. And and it's not just only that, but though a lot of students, they're not even aware with all the resources that's out there for them. They definitely have more resources than we did when we were in school. But yes, there's resources out there. That's another challenge that I would like to touch base on. Um, students, I've noticed like in the past couple of years and stuff, students and I like to research. Um, and I think that when, when we were in school at a younger age, we did, uh, I don't know if it's because we had to, because the information just wasn't freely out there freely for us, but we took a little bit more initiative to kind of find out certain yeah. things on process, even whether if it was late or early. Whereas these students, um, these past couple of year cohorts, they, they're not so yeah. uh, persistent, as I see, okay. in wanting to find it and stuff. And so basically, one of my big things, as far as with Dean Brand and stuff, we want the student to become more um, self-directed. Because I think that this is mostly important stuff. And because, again, we have all this information out there at the top of the hands and stuff. And so I can get it. It can be overwhelming for young people. But though if we te- teach them in bits and pieces, but teach them how to be responsible and more self-directed, where they are also are become eager and wanting to know the information, I think that it will help a lot of students, um, young people young people navigating their lives. And so that's one of the things that Dean granted, we want to just not only prep you for your college or your just your entrance exam, but the overall goal is to to advise you holistically and advise the whole person. How did you come up with the name, Dean Brannon? I don't know if this ever after you. How? I know. I get a, a lot of questions like that, especially when people call the company stuff they expect to hear a man. Well, Dean Brannon, is actually um, conjoined with my parents' name. My Dean was my dad's middle name, and ah. Brandon was my mother's maiden name. And so I wanted to leave a legacy for my parents and stuff. And my parents was very big pushers of college. Education. They wanted um, me to go to edu- um, get an education. They weren't so, and fortunate to go to college and stuff, but that was one of their dreams for their kids to go to college. And I wanted to uh, dedicate that for them. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. All this time, I never even knew, and I never thought to ask. I'm like, where did it come from? Oh, that's yeah. like, oh, that's the must be so proud. Yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, my Aww. mother passed December 22nd, and my dad just recently passed Aww. July 10th. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a rough year for you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Thank how, you. How old were they? Uh, my father had just turned 80 in June and my mother was 74. Uh, I lost my mom seven years ago. She was 62 to, to lung cancer. So I could empathize oh, wow. with that. And, you know, were they, I'm sure they were so proud of you, right? W- when you started this up and oh, how, God, how did they was... take it when you told them the name that you were, you know, cause you have to go get your trademark. You have to go, you like, how yeah. did you? So my mom, <laughs> my mom was a very private person. <laughs> so the first day she was like, Oh, why did you use my last my original last name? I'm like, mom, it, it's okay. That's not your last name anymore. <laughs> no, they were definitely um, excited. My father and stuff. He's not um, a computer whiz and stuff, so it was just basically like he he loved what I was doing and what I was doing and telling him. But as far as exactly what did he understand exactly what I was doing? I don't think he did. <laughs> But he was very proud because he knew that it was something important and something I was very passionate about. And it was something uh, for education. So definitely my mother supported. I love it. Okay. 
I don't know. I was just saying that um, I just wish that they were able to kind of see the real six, true success of it. They were around to be witness when it was built and when it was established and when I got the LLC for it to start the company. So well, yeah. I'm sure they're proud. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> what else did you want other listeners to know about you and the company, your services, your courses? What did you want to share? Um, again, um, I just even though we offer these services and stuff, but though we also um, offer a consultation, you can definitely call Dean Brandon and you can contact us. To, like, say, for instance, if you're a high school student and you're kind of curious about what college to go to, mm-hmm. we offer also advising as well a pathway, um, a pathway. I'm sorry pathway advising meaning basically like say for instance if you were interested in doing uh, education but you're not sure which school that you want to go to and if say if you're taking early college or dual credit courses and you want to see what classes to transfer we would happily advise and that's a free of charge if you have any questions on that and we can also build you a whole plan to let you know how fluid these courses would transfer to your top three institutions because again um The whole purpose is that we want to give back. And some of these services that Dean Brandon offers, a lot of people will ask, well, why would I come to you when these similar services for free Mm -hmm. at the college? Well, working at the college, you're not going to get so much of the detailed information. Yeah, you would get a plan um, and you would definitely get advised. Um, However, you have to think about the coaches and how big are their caseloads and so you want to see would you be able to get that direct response Mm -hmm. right away well with dean brandon we have the time to be able to really assess you and assist you with your plan and also give you a detailed plan that you can take back even to your advisor whatever university that is that you plan to go to and you can have it checked off but I can guarantee you that our, our services stuff will be able to get you to the right direction, even if you are undecided right now, because that's really that's the cohort that we prefer. If you're undecided, not sure and stuff, then let us help you and stuff. So that way we can remove any barriers and be proactive and get you to success yay well you know let's talk about um you know some of the uh, online you have some some blogs and you blog a lot you talk a lot about what about (laughs) what is happening in the college community these days is there any like things that we should be aware of with our kids with our students since the pandemic i know there's a lot going on with loans and stuff is it any of this subsidized could you get money for the courses like from the government or how does this part work well, as far as with Dean Brandon and stuff, we're kind of a, a say a private and stuff. We're an yeah. LLC. We're not a nonprofit, so uh-huh. you wouldn't be able to use yeah, like far as government funds, like your financial aid to pay up the course, unless you were a, like, for instance, you're already in school and you're paying for courses, and say you got a refund, <laughs> you can use those that funding, of course. But no, this is what actually um, it's not a, a nonprofit just yet, because that's something that's also in the works that we're thinking about. We're sp- still fairly new. Um, even though we were established in 2019, but mm-hmm. however, with all the times with the uh, pandemic, it's almost like we had to restart again. So we're still trying to get um, get the name um, built and stuff, and get it, the information out there to people. So right now, that we do charge for our services, not all of our services. Like I said, you can call that number at any time. We also have um, a chat box on the website if you have any questions. Um, typically, we have someone monitoring that, but sometimes that um, is not goes unmonitored. But yep. give us 24 hours and you'll get an automatic response from that and so um yeah i think that we we our services are pretty reasonable stuff and we can work with you Perfect. but again our consultations are free so if you ever have any questions please don't hesitate to call and um at dbi-llc.org that's the website d B I dash L L C dot org. That's the website. Do you want to give some more inside examples of, you know, the, the people that are coming out of your program that feel inspired, who have felt like, wow, you know, life changing after, you know, they worked with all the gain these new, new skills and leadership tools. Okay. 
Well, as far as the program, I haven't had um, been able to establish some of the leadership just yet and stuff because we're still working on those components, um, building that out. And that's, like I said, that would be customized more for high school. So for right now, for our um, college, collegiate students, it will just be the test preps as yeah. far as the college entrance exam as well as the um, pre-nursing allied health exam. And we're hoping by the end of next year that we will expand to the NCLEX, which is the main exam for um, nursing students to get their license. So I'm hoping to be able to incorporate that by the end of next year to be able to help even a more broader uh, group of students. Mm -hmm. I love it. And here you are, you're working so hard with this. You're also holding on another full-time job, right? Yes, I am. And could you share (laughs) a little bit about your background? It's important. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm a senior success coach and stuff. So, um, guys, when I tell you about the consulting and advising, I have that experience and stuff. That's what I currently do. Something I'm passionate about, helping young people to get to their goals. And so, um, a lot of the things that was started by Dean Brandon is from 15 years of observation and kind of research and experience being working in the field of student services. I worked in different capacities of student services, Mm -hmm. but my main time has been in advising, academic advising, but also I have experience in financial aid. So when I consult to you about financial aid, I promise you those are facts and you can always cross check those things. And would you say, you know, you're waking up every day, you truly love what you do? I do. I love what I do, but I love what I'm building more. Got it. Now, people out there who may not have had the parents that you had that were supportive of education, supportive of going to school, furthering their education, what would you say to them? I would say to them is basically follow your passion. Because even though I had supportive parents to tell me to go to school, but you had to, again, I had older parents uh, mm-hmm. and I had parents that didn't um, have the experience of going to school. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those things that I had to learn and navigate on my own, um, being a first generation student. So I definitely can relate to a lot of first generational students. I basically tell you and stuff, you go with your gut, have grit. And pursue your dreams because you never know what you can do unless you put that foot forward. Oh, it's so yeah. true. I love it. Uh, see, my parents were young parents, but they never pushed me to go to school. They didn't give me those tools that inside. I think I mentioned this before, but like if it wasn't for my friends all going to college and they're watching their parents sit down with them, I, I didn't know about it because I was the first one, I, even though I was the youngest in the family that went. So it was just like a, a culture shock. Like I wish I had more supportive parents more, but at the same time, then you got to re- realize there's a lot of people out there still like that today, but that's yeah. why there's great, great resources out there just like you know what you're offering because it could be overwhelming and intimidating for sure definitely and a strong support group is important and stuff and especially for our our young people having that foundation is important because that would be that give and take but though even far as do you think jill if you didn't see your friends did you have that feeling that you know that you're supposed to be doing more than what you were doing at the time. And sometimes that you may not have that supporting group. You maybe you have to actually take that first step to connect to that supporting group. So I would always say, follow that gut feeling because you already knew inside, even then it was more out there for you. And you took the um, steps to even whether to look and evaluate your friends because you have some friends that they may decide to go to school or whatever, but they may not be that um, inspiration for you, that motivation. But for you, you already knew that it was something there. And so you took those steps to pay, to pay attention. And sometimes our support is right in front of our faces. It may not be our parents. It may not be our friends, but there is somebody there. I promise you, it always is. That would be that person to give you that push for you to go to your dreams and sometimes it just takes that first step to do it and want it oh my how pa- proud were your parents when you got your doctorate oh my gosh they was ecstatic now my mother rest her soul i i was supposed to defend that month um that she passed so she didn't get to see me finish oh um, she knew that i was at the end um but she didn't get to see me finish my father was ecstatic oh he was very proud and stuff and just knowing that the support uh, I had with my parents um, t- towards the end, 
I, it was still beautiful. And it's still fu- even funny, even getting pursuing that degree. <laughs> It was still like starting all over again from the first year and stuff. They're like, okay, now what are you doing? Now, why is it taking so long? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they were very proud. I know my mother was very proud. And I know that was one thing that she definitely wanted me to do before she left this earth. And I did. I accomplished that for her. Beautiful. Well, thank you yeah. so much for being here, for sharing your experience and helping thank so you. many. Uh, Dr. Tamara Smith, how do we contact you? Please, you can reach me at www.dbi-llc.org, and you can reach us at the number 917-426-5842. And I know a lot of uh, people, and they're like, well, if you're in Texas, what are you doing with the New York number? (laughs) And so, and and I probably, they probably already automatically think like, oh, no, this is spam. No, I promise. It's it's not spam. We use the New York number at the time, so because when we were establishing the company, that was the number that we had. I'm like, well, I already had put it in documents and stuff. But so I felt like, well, it will probably pull more interest if I was to use a bigger city's um, number and so forth. And, I'm, and we're having a multiple lines and stuff. But that <laughs> line, I promise you, it is legit. And you have someone to answer and, and uh, respond to your needs or requests. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure having you here. One more Thank time. You. Tell us the website one last time. www.dbi-llc.org. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thanks so much. Looking forward to the Thank next you. time we connect. You have a fantastic Absolutely. day. And all of our Thank listeners, you. stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Bye-bye. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing, I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know, know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat, or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.